Hey everybody and welcome back. Well we're going to uh, press on with the tank, bunch of stuff to show you on that because I've been beavering away practicing and uh, because there's a lot of practicing involved I'm not sure how much you'll have to get to see this week uh, just like with making the book just was a really slow process so what you saw was only a fraction of the time that I, I took on that but you know I don't want to just show you me shaving away at something or sanding it but uh, there's various stuff done with that I got my clamps remember I mentioned nice big um, rubber pads on them and various other bits and pieces so we're going to show you that other than that there's nothing much happening we've had our first snow but it's going to be warm again the next couple of days so it's already melted but most days it's it's around freezing when I wake up and it's not getting very warm during the day. So, uh, nothing else to say. Let's get on and I'll show you what I'm attempting to do with this tank. Right, so first thing to notice is this blue line. Because I got this to fit nicely and uh, with these clamps I can put the clamps on I like this type because you can just uh, sort of squeeze them up so that all fits nicely I put one there and uh, one I put on the, the front so that'll hold that nicely in place so it's touching everything the blue line when I finally got it all sorted it wasn't quite straight it stuck out a little bit at the top so what I did was I took it back an inch and a quarter from this face here and I'll do the same when we get the front done so what I did was I just put an inch and a quarter on here and I went round and marked it and then put some tape on and cut it nice and square so that will go on there nicely like that so that was that part done so as I say now we're going to start and try and shape this so let me show you a couple of things with that. I don't know if I showed you this, but I bought a leather bag, which you can either fill with uh, shot or this is full of sand. And I bought a set of hammers with it. So there's three different ones. That one's flat faced. So these are all for pounding. And I'll show you something else to that in a moment. I also, I was watching one guy making the sort of curve I wanted to make. And he was using a thing like this, so I made one of those and mounted it to a bar so I can put it in the vise. Because I have a couple of things like that. I've made that one previously. It's a lot easier, you just hold it in the vise. And then instead of trying to hold this and the hammer and everything, you can just put your piece on and work away. So we've got that sort of stuff. But I found I couldn't get the curve I wanted with this maybe could have but I decided I needed a shrinking stump so let me show you that right well I was gonna go out in the woods and find myself a nice maple tree or something that was down and get a stump and then I was at my friend Mike's and he has one of these outdoor furnaces I don't think I've ever seen them in the UK They're about as big as a portaloo and it's a wood furnace with a water tank and you heat your water for your house heating well he goes to uh, a wood mill and they have pieces of wood like this look it's it's like 12 inches square some of them are four and five feet long but they're scrap and it's hardwood so I, I grabbed one of those while I was there and I, I haven't quite finished making this I was watching a chap making one and what he did was he marked out where he wanted his circle he got his circular saw and he just plunged in and then he kept going round and round and round so he took a load of it out and then he used a chisel to break it out and then a, a disc sander to start to get it nice and smooth but uh, you'll see me using that a little bit later on so now let's get to the experimental pieces so as I say I've never done this before so uh, as a couple of people pointed out to me unnecessarily it's difficult 
but you know I mean I've never welded before or anything else so you know find out until you try so what I needed to do was this slopes along the sides but the big thing is to get this here and my plan was to sort of make it dish shaped and then just cut out so that it fitted on there so I started off just using some scrap pieces of 6061 and this was the first effort and what I realized was I didn't have sort of the shape to start with because one thing I'd noticed as I was looking at people using the shrinking stump was they all basically made you know sort of balls dishes they started with a round piece and gradually turned the sides up so then I played around with where are we hold on a second some cardboard as per usual trying to decide what shape it wanted to be to then get it to curve in so I made that up and this is the next effort as you can see we're starting to get there it's curving hang on can you see this the sides are curving so it's narrow at this end wider at that end and they're curving to follow this curve here so I'm finding out how to get that curved and then I'm using that nice shiny thing I made to tighten it up a little bit and to get it to fit along the bottom so what you tend to find is you get this end nice and then when you look this end is curved in too much and you start to straighten this out so it fits the ribs and this opens this out and it doesn't fit so it really is very much a backwards and forwards thing but I'm quite pleased with that um, obviously you can see here if I'd made that a slightly different shape to start with so that this had I'd had up more material to bring it in then I would have been fine so I'm working on this I'm working on this I've got to finalize my cardboard template so that I can cut a piece of 3003 but don't worry about all the bumpiness that's the one thing that put me off when I first started watching these it looks awful when people start but um, they either use an English wheel which smooths out but of course here I can't because I couldn't get that into an English wheel so what I'm going to do have to do here is is planish it all out so what that is is we're going to have I have various shaped dollies put the dolly in and then just tap 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 get rid of all the high spots then we'll sand it over with the stay there with an orbital a random orbit sander and that will just show me all the highs and lows and then basically you just keep at it there is of course um, a mechanical planishing hammer which is sort of a, a dolly and then the top bit goes bang 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 when you put your foot on the brake on the switch but we don't have one of them we are doing this by hand but as I say I was at first I was starting to lose patience well not so much lose patience with it but when I'd made this one and I just couldn't get it the right shape but then I worked on this one and slowly I thought to myself no wait a minute if I start to hit it here it's going to curve and then I worked on it and it's coming round so that's enough waffle let's um, find a piece of alloy and I'll show you how I started doing this and very much this video is not a how to video there are lots of really good sheet metal workers on YouTube you're just going with me for the experience here and it'll either work or it won't work right well I have cut my piece out giving myself some extra material there now this is like true in flywheels it is not for the faint at heart hang on it also is noisy so I'm going to put my little earplugs in I'm 
believe me, when you first start, it looks awful. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it on there. You see, it makes these little tucks because it's stretching the metal so now there's, there's more metal there. So the next thing you start to do is you go around and you squish down your little tucks and as you can see it's already started. Then you gradually move in. And we just keep doing that. And there, it's still in. You can see it's starting to curve. Now, as I say, what it does do is it starts to distort the whole thing. Believe me, I really thought, oh God, I'm never going to get this right. It looked awful when I was doing it. So let me keep on pulling at this. can start to use the curve of that as well. You gotta, apparently you tap your little tucks flat and that stretches this metal and then as you bang it in on itself, you shrink that. And that's why it pulls it in. So let me keep banging on this. I'm not gonna show you uh, hours of just banging. Let me get this done, and then we'll take it over to the first forming tool. All right, who spotted our first mistake? Hang on. I was using the wrong hammer. See, that's got a flattish end, it's got a round end. Now we should get some better tucks. I told you, I'm learning as I go along. Now it's curling. There you go. Doesn't that look better? As I say, makes it look bloody awful on this side, but we will work all that out. So let me carry on with the right hammer and fold this in more. In fact, I think I'll use the one with the bigger end here to get more curves. See, basically I'm just going to I'm going to do that part. In fact, we'll go over to the bag. Right, now we'll start our uh, rough shaping. Sorry, I thought for a minute there I heard the camera click off.
See, now we're starting to bring that around as well. As I say, the top looks awful, but it all gets planished out. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I did anneal this. You can see it, uh, it bends up quite easily. So, that's getting to be really close to what we want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is flatten out these sides which we'll do just, uh, ugh, I keep leaving the hammers where I was instead of having them where, where I am. I nearly knocked a big floodlight bulb off the shelf there, getting this hammer. So the next thing we'll do is just uh, put this down on a flat surface to knock these out a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is tighten this up, make it more of a curve and we're going to use our nice shiny thing for that. So we'll start on this with a body hammer and you notice it's nice and shiny, you want them smooth so you don't mark what you're working on. You can see we're starting to make that curve in more. Right, let's go and have a look, see how we're coming along. Now we'll see if I, uh, I did that extra material in the right place. Ah, there we go. So we're going to make that come in a little bit more. And then that should close up around that beautifully. So let me keep hammering. So we're getting closer and closer, we're getting this curve in. Now what we've got here is, as that's curved round, you see how this bit has come down. So we need to get that round the same as that. So let me mark that and I'll get the, uh, the tin snips and cut that round. It's not like that. Okay. Right, well, I've got uh, two pieces of information for all those thinking of doing this. You need to make yourself a slapper because what I was finding was that just using the hammer tended to sort of localise this. So with a slapper, you remember this was, was bumped up here, went down. That's now, I've been able to flatten that out by putting it on there and doing that like that. And you can see as well, I just gave it one rub of one blast over with the orbital sander. And you remember all the big lumps and knobs? See, they've all gone. I've just got some tiny low spots which I can probably slap out and certainly sand out. So that's one thing we've learned. The other thing I learned is that when you're re-annealing it be careful you don't overheat it because if you overheat it it does that I don't know if you can see but in there it's just like crystalline and the stresses in it just popped it see I, I actually burnt it off at the bottom and that weakness just let it fracture right through 
So that, after all that work, looks really nice that side, is scrap. And I don't have any more 3003, so I've got to order some. Today is Wednesday. It'll come tomorrow, Thursday. But Thursday, I'm going, I have an eye appointment, so they'll be dilating my pupils in the morning. I won't be able to do anything tomorrow. Uh, Friday is an off day as well, so we'll try to get it back to this on Saturday morning and then Saturday afternoon we can see if we can uh, I'm so annoyed because it was going well and I was just being careful you know I think I might put the soot on and then burn it off with the map torch because that doesn't burn as hot as the oxyacetylene and actually you see I did it there oh damn and I managed to get that down and this is actually long so I knew I was going to be cutting a piece off so I thought great and then I turned it over saw that I was not best pleased so I'll go and find something else to do I've got to clear the gutters out for one thing until the other alloy comes tomorrow but really make yourself one of these again nice and smooth but it really did it took all those lumpy dents straight out I put it on here as I say, and slapped it and all the bits because that come up and gone in that just leveled out beautifully all right so that's it for the day for this job see you on Saturday right well it's Saturday morning I've had my left eye laser welded back together had my booster um, COVID vaccination so the alloy came we're gonna have another go at this Right now yesterday when I was having my uh, cappuccino and donuts with my friend Mike, another friend turned up who is a sheet metal worker, tin knocker as they call them here, uh, has been all his life. So I was showing him the test pieces in this and he reckoned the reason that had happened was because this really was too much of a transition for the way I was doing it. He said I should have made that well, one of two things I either should have made that less of a curve because he says that's put so much stress in there that when I uh, made that little cock up there and sort of burnt into the end it just released the stresses and fractured right through so as I say he mentioned making the curve lesser or he said what he would probably have done is actually made this in two pieces so this part here he would have made as a strip so then it only needed to be curved uh, from that so that actually fits in with something I was thinking about because originally I wasn't going to make this cut out like that I think I said I was going to make it like a dish the idea was originally I was going to make it so this whole thing sort of came down here and then I would mark it on the inside where that is and cut the end out to make that opening so we're going back to that plan and uh, we are going to slope it a little bit more so what I've done is the original template which went round there I've made an extra piece so we're actually going to cut our alloy like that and then shape the whole thing and then, as I say cut a piece out so let me cut some alloy some 3003 prepare it and then we'll take it over to the shrinking stump all right so as I say what we're going to do is we're going to pound it sort of all the way around that and make it into a bowl. starting to get our little tucks
go in a bit further. We get the bigger hammer, I think. So we start the dish, alright, so let me carry on hammering, well I'll do a little bit more for you, it's hard to decide how much to show. starting to get some big chucks which I remember the one chap I was watching said the more you get into the middle you get less but deeper tucks It almost feels as if you're straightening out what you've just bent but in fact you're not here you're stretching it out and here you fold it back on itself so this edge gets shorter than there so it curves so it's coming around more and more so I'm not going to keep you watching this for this might take me quite some time Right, well I've been beavering away at this, banging and thumping and carrying on. So it's coming, as I say, when we get it done then actually we'll put it on the, the bottom so I can clip it at the sides. And then inside here, we'll mark it, cut it so that it fits around that. Actually I noticed that this is a little wider from the forming and everything. That's why we're going to try it on the actual base. This comes in right to there you see there's a little lip here on the actual base the way it's formed it comes in more so if i make it to sort of fit that it won't quite fit the base the other thing i've done actually this is annoying i made new templates i kept those templates all that time and then finally i threw them out I put them in a rubbish bag that linda took to the rubbish like two hours ago and then i suddenly thought wait a minute I need a couple of templates because I can't see inside. This way I can uh, I can check. That's still a reasonable way off. This is getting to be, can you see any of this? Only just, this is getting to be oops, reasonably close. Anyway, I'm gonna keep battering on at this and uh, well, that's it. I'll just keep battering on. It needs to come in more a good bit here. I've got to work out how to get this to slim. To pound it and bring this in. So I don't really want to have to sort of cut it here. Make that piece and then make the cone for the end. Or the dish for the end. Because as with everything else, I'd like to find out how to do this properly. 
So let me keep going and I'll bring you back towards the end of the day and we'll see how much we've got for this week. Right, well, it's coming along. It's a slow process. I'm sure it's one of those things that if I knew where to hit it to get it to do the right thing, because sometimes I'm working away and then when I finish up, I'm worse than I was. So I have to sort of work my way backwards. Like now, I've been working to get this to fit in and this other side has sort of uh, sprung out a little bit. But it's getting there. I had to cut that piece out because I couldn't get it to bend in with uh, the metal there. So I cut it out sort of outside of where I needed it. And I just started planishing it in a bit because it was getting a bit wavy up on the top. But it's coming back straight. It's up to my lines here. There we go. It's at my bottom line. It's at my front line there. So it should match up with the other piece. Just maybe trim it a little bit. But the thing with this is, you know, there's so much work involved. The last thing I want to do is cut a piece off and then find that I've cut too much off because, you know, that would be more than just annoying. All right, it's nearly five o'clock Saturday. So I'm going to have to knock off. Now, next week, there won't be a video because... Um, it's Thanksgiving this week. Hang on a second. Right, that's better. If I talk to you, you should be able to see me. So what I was saying is, uh, it's Thanksgiving here this Thursday. So I'll be down in Baltimore with Linda and her daughter's family for like three or four days. So next week is basically a wash. So... That'll give me a little bit extra time and then the week after, hopefully, this is one of those things that's really difficult to make a video about because I could, it, I can't even show you the beginning and the end because it takes me days in between. So there would be nothing in the video if I didn't actually show you some of the banging and slapping. But anyway, in two weeks time, I will see you. So until then, stay safe and enjoy yourselves.